Hello there, this is Toby, uh, and uh, welcome to the show where we uh, code a programming language on stream. Only this time I'm going to be recording it and then uploading it. Um, so we're working on this programming language called the X language. Uh, in case you don't know about it, uh, the code for this language is here on, uh, on GitHub, um, as you can see. Um, what I thought I would do, or at least start with, uh, for this session is, um, is, uh, do a couple of code challenges using this programming language. Um, that's often how I, um, figure out if there are missing holes in the language by doing just some simple programs. And if you run out of ideas of, of programs that you can write, you can go to a site like Code Wars and it'll feed you uh, code challenges. So I thought I would do some of that. Um, another thing I want to mention is that um, I'm, I'm planning um, to, to put out some more content on my how to make a programming language series. Um, so uh, keep an eye out, keep an eye out for that. Okay, so without further ado, let's do some of this. Actually, first, before I start a coding challenge, I thought that I would do a little bit of code cleanup. Uh, this, this project repository is getting a little large. There's a lot of file. Uh, files here. Uh, on the one hand, I kind of like having a flat folder structure, but on the other hand, we just have a lot of uh, examples here, and it's getting a little ungainly. So I thought I would make a folder for the code examples. Uh, I don't like having to type a lot, <laughs> so I'm going to make the folder name really short. I'm going to call the folder EX, and then I'm just going to move all of my files, my example files, I should say, into this ex folder and there they are and now and i also have this play yeah these are probably examples as well uh, i also have this test lexer file which i don't really need uh, perhaps i just although it might be helpful for you guys the viewer okay because I, I created this file in one of the episodes testing out the lexer uh, i might leave this here or not, because after all, all of the code is on GitHub and version controlled. Um, I think I'm still gonna leave this here. I'm just gonna put a comment on here and just say this is um, this is a test file for the Lexer, which was initially created to play around with is no longer needed. Okay, so I'll just leave this around. I am, I'm actually also going to delete this run. No, I, I'm also not gonna delete it. And I'll just put a comment and say, this file is unneeded and is superseded by run.js, okay? So run run.js uh, allows you to run the program. Um, so I moved all the example programs there, but I wanna make sure that I can still run the examples from the subfolder easily. So let me go to the terminal and do node run.js uh, and then pick one of the examples. Say play.x to run and uh, it does not work, it does not work. Is this one of the runnable examples even? It may not be, I don't know. I'm gonna try a different one. Uh, which one did I make last time example if example if two example if two is the one i worked on last time okay 
Oh, this one does work. And and okay, I can run programs directly from the ex folder. And <laughs> this one says you're old. Great. Okay, so I think that's good enough for code cleanup. So let's jump into a um, a code challenge. Uh, this one looks like I'm gonna change a snake cased string to camel case. So let's give that a try. Uh, we have some test cases here. So um, I'll make a file, call it to camel case dot x. And let's see. Um, I would think so to camel case is the name of the function the still warrior is the string I'll call this result and just print the result I think let me try running this <laughs> this is not gonna work Okay, uh, cam up we wrote a to camel case dot x dot ast and then when we generated it we could not no such file or directory to camel case dot x dot ast that's a problem we might need to do some debugging here uh, okay, so let me see. The parse file is supposed to have to have generated the AST file, but the generator is saying that didn't exist. And why did you print out you wrote to this file? Oh, because it wrote it in the wrong directory. Okay, so that's a problem. Yeah, it wrote it in the outside directory. So, so we're, we're actually not done fixing the system. We need to fix the system now. Uh, we actually need the directory name of the file and use that to output the resulting file. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. I, I actually have this code to generate the... Um, okay, I'm gonna get the dir name. Um, probably do it here. I'll call this base dir is equal to path that dir name of the file name. I think that's how you get the base dir. And then with the base dir, I'm going to append it to the beginning of the file name. Like this. And I think I should also do it for the case when there's ambiguous grammar here. And then I'm going to delete this AST file and try again. Okay. This time it says two camel case is not defined and that it's more reasonable. It's more reasonable because that's the error I would have expected. So let's define two camel case. Two camel case, I think the way <laughs> We define a function here in this language. I have to be reminded me. I have to be reminded what a function looks like in this language. Okay, it looks like that. So I think I, I'm, I'm uh, right. So, okay, this is going to be a string. And given a string, probably want to split this snick case string. Do we have a split function? I'm going to split it by the dash character and to get the parts and uh, does that work and then maybe join it back together let's see if that works at the very least now we have a parse error oh because we don't have a return keyword it's an implicit return um, join is not function that's defined so we need to add a 
join function to our runtime. Let's go to the runtime. We do have a split function. Yes. Let's add a join function right next to it. This actually would be an array. Okay, try again. Bam. Okay, we have split and join. Now, we what we probably want after this is to um, capitalize. Do we need to capitalize just the next two letters? Let's see. Oh. What? Why does this guy get all caps, whereas this guy does not? I, I guess the first word doesn't get capitalized, but the, the next words do get capitalized. But if the first word is already capitalized, we leave that alone. Got it. We're going to need a capitalized function. Let's write the capitalized function first. Capitalize. Uh, it takes a string and capitalizes it. Um, how do you do that? What do we have something in the runtime to help us do that? We have an at function. So let's do at zero. First letter equals at this string. This string at zero. And now we need to to uppercase it. And now we're going to return, um, oh, we need substring, don't we? Oh, don't write return. Rest would be substring of the string starting at 1. Now I'm going to need the substring function. All right, but we need to add some utility functions. Substring, given a string, you get two indexes, I think, start and end. But the end is optional. I think there's substr and then there's substring. And I think the substring takes this. The second one is a length or something. JavaScript substring versus substr. Oh, or to the end of the string. Okay. Actually, the second one is also an index. So the ending index, so I was right, is the start index and the end index. Okay. So, but if you don't provide the end index, it'll just give you from the start to the end. So that's the rest. And then and, uh, don't write return. I'll call this just first to be short. So first plus rest. Let me just print the result of capitalizing hello. See if that worked. The oh, we don't have a plus operator um, because we were cheating. Um, but we do have a add <laughs> function, so it can add first and rest together. Uh, hmm. We have syntax error. Oh, I don't think we allow single quotes for strings in this language. Okay, so now we, we need the to uppercase function to be provided at, uh, as part of the runtime. So let's add that. Uh, while we're at it, might as well do to lowercase. Substring. Oh, I didn't. I decided to do a camel case there. I'm not sure if that's a good idea. I'm going to switch it back to not camel case.
Oh. Why do we have a zero? At the beginning. Uh, could be because of how I implemented add. Oh yeah, add was implemented as reduce. Okay, <laughs> interesting. Uh, so add is for numbers. Let's make a something for strings and I'm gonna call it concat and concat is gonna start off at the empty string and that's gonna help us so add is for numbers and concat is for strings that's what I'm that's my story and I'm sticking to it so we're able to uh, capitalize a word we have a capitalized function now that we can use in our two camel case function and then now we can actually use map um we can map over can we map over uh i will just split the string so let's split i mean not not split the string uh we already have an array parts is an array so we can map over parts yes it takes an array and then a function so and a function looks like, or a block looks like this. And we can <coughs> uh, capitalize the part. And then after that, we're going to join it together with an empty string. Let's see if that works. Or uh, I want to print the result now. The steel warrior, except okay, we're almost there. Except that we don't have the uh, we don't want to capitalize the first word. Um, yeah, we we actually do not want to capitalize the first word as this example shows. And we'll 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 write write some tests later, perhaps. We'll do a little assert statement, maybe. Um, uh, a, B, C. A, B, C should just give you A, B, C in all caps. Interesting. And we also have, um, OK. OK, so how do we do this? We're going to need an index. Um, and we'll say something like, well, if index uh, we don't, yeah, we do have an if statement now, <laughs> if I remember correctly. If index is uh, zero, then it's, it's just going to return the part. Else, we're going to return a uh, capitalize of the part. Excuse that phone. Um, it doesn't like the, oh, we, d again, we don't have, uh, operators. So if you want to compare two things, it's the EQ function. Forgot about that. We do have if statements though. That's a thing that we do have. Part. Unexpected new line character token after the word part. Uh, on line 11. Here, it doesn't like just this identifier being by itself. Uh, the parser doesn't like that. I think we might have to fix the parser because it's saying a statement cannot just be an identifier and that's actually wrong. Yeah. So I'm going to change that. Because we need we need a statement to just be an identifier in order for this implicit return to work. 
and this is a functional programming language so this should work so now that I changed the parser we need to npm run gen parser and run this and uh, what oh shoot we have a problem <laughs> I have an unforeseen problem here um, uh, the if statement that I have constructed actually it, it used to work because I had the if statement implemented as a function so let me let me show you what I mean oh we actually have this JS file at the top level I'll go fi fix that later but previously I had an if statement implemented as a function and I called it dollar function and that worked because it could return a value and which is what I did but now I have actually changed it and made the if generate a um, generate an actual if statement in JavaScript and uh, part of me is kind of thinking I made a mistake doing that and I want to I might want to go back um, and I think I will. I'm gonna go back on my decision to generate a um, an if statement. Um, so I'm gonna change it back to when you when you write an if statement, when you write an if statement like this, it's actually gonna generate a function call. Uh, it's actually gonna generate a function call to the if function, and it'll actually uh, the if function will actually take sort of uh, two, uh, one conditional and then two f functions, two arrow functions at, as its argument like this. And, and it will always return either the return value of this part or the return value of this part. And therefore the if function will always have a return value. So my code used to do that. Uh, I I changed it, but I'm now I'm gonna change it back. Although I'm gonna still gonna keep this if syntax though. Still keeping this if syntax, okay? So, uh, which means I'm not changing the grammar at all. The grammar stays the same. I'm gonna go change the generator. Generate.js, okay, so if I, you receive an if statement now I'm gonna say I'm not gonna generate this if statement in JavaScript but I'm gonna generate a call to this dollar if function which I kind of removed but now I'm, now I'm regretting it so I'm gonna have to bring it back um, and then the, the the block that's generated um, in JavaScript will have to be wrapped inside of this arrow function and um, let me think I'm thinking I'm just gonna write code in the two different blocks so okay so in the case there is an alternate we're gonna generate this else but if there's no alternate we just generate this And this closing parenthesis should come here, and now we need a comma here. And then, okay, I made this array just to make it easier to read, but I'm gonna join it together like that. And at the end, I'm just gonna return this if statement. Okay, uh, and then in the runtime, let me just 
generate this code. It's not gonna work because there isn't a dollar if function. But I'm going to check this code to see if it looks like what I want it to look like. Uh, oh, I, I need a implicit return statement, don't I? Ouch, okay. So in order to do that, Do I have implicit return implemented for functions? Oh, the generate function statement does this. I see. I might need that for the block as well. Oh, I should you just use the generate function function <laughs> to um, yes, that's what I should do. I should just use this generate function function to generate the uh, the block for the if statement. It takes parameters. We don't actually have parameters, so I'm gonna give that the empty array and name is also optional. Okay, so I'm gonna use generate function here and use empty array as the parameters because there are no parameters and if i did that it will generate a return statement uh here for, for the last statement of the block that's what i'm expecting it to do because of this logic here it says if it's the last index in the array it's gonna stick this return statement at the beginning uh, let's see if it did that or not uh, I think it ran into trouble it says statements that map is not a function uh, on line 87 um, oh wait Oh, because, because this is a code block. I need to drill into its statements property to get the actual statements. And also I realize I need to do the same thing for this guy. Okay, let me test this. Oh, and actually uh, it should no longer be allowed to have if statements that don't have an alternate actually so I'm, I should not even allow that uh, let me get this fixed and then I'll fix that because in a, in a functional programming language if statements always have to have an else part okay I'm gonna fix this error by providing a dollar if function in the runtime say if conditional is true and I'm going to return result of calling consequent else return the result of calling alternate and I hope that works <laughs> what just happened Maybe I shouldn't have this arrow. Maybe the arrow is already provided by, yes, or the function syntax is already provided. So I shouldn't have this arrow. It was printing out a function. Oh, the stealth worry, it worked. Yes. Uh, 
I actually got the uh, camel case program to work. Uh, so now, <laughs> uh, oh, it also has to work with um, underscores as well. So that's a new requirement, and I don't quite know how to do that. I guess in JavaScript, you would use a regular expression. Um, the split function, let me think. In JavaScript, how can I exploit this split function? Do I have to implement... Um, <laughs> it's a movie, okay. That's not exactly what I was looking for. I want a split function in JavaScript. And split function, I believe it can take a regular expression. It's just a string or a regular expression. That's it. Hmm. I can either hmm. I can either support regular expressions in this language which would mean I need to write the parser for it and then sort of transfer it over to JavaScript uh, I wasn't looking to do that necessarily or another way i could approach it is um i could have the separator be an array of possibilities i could maybe like do this oh my array actually looks like this so I, this is how i instantiate an array in this language so i, I could use this to mean uh, separator is either this or this maybe and then internally to the runtime function I do something special although I kind of don't like don't like this maybe I should just uh, bite the bullet and implement uh, regular expressions for this let me test JavaScript's uh, syntax for splitting with a regular expression. See if in JavaScript it'll work out the way I think it would. Okay, so ABC, DEF, HI. Split on the this, and there it splits. So if I want to split on either of these characters, I think what I would do is use the character class. This is the character class syntax. Ah, sorry. Okay, so this is the character class syntax. Um, and it means a character that matches any of the choices that's described inside. So this syntax works, so I could update my lexer to support the uh, regular expression syntax. Should I do that? Yeah, let's go ahead and do that. All right, do I have a lexer? I do. Okay, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna add a regex token. Um, and I shall use a regex to match a regex. <laughs> so first, we need a uh, backslash, and then need another backslash, and then in between, we're gonna allow anything that is either not a backslash. Okay, I'm gonna use some um, 
Okay, so this question mark and then colon sign here, by the way, means we're not capturing anything. Uh, 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 we're not using these parentheses as a capture group, and uh, which we're not, because we're using it to match the total uh, expression. And I believe in Moo, you're not supposed to use capture groups at all. Give me one moment. Okay, I'm back. Um, so yeah, so I'm gonna use the same pattern. Um, so I'm gonna say this is a the the characters that can go between the two uh, backslashes can either be one or the other. The one is any. Uh, both of them are character classes. Uh, I'll do the right hand side. I'll follow the example of the string here. Uh, I'll explain what the string one is doing first. So again, this question mark and colon. Let me make this bigger, actually. I want to explain this well. And to explain something well, I'm going to get out my tablet so that I can draw it, draw it out. So what? <laughs> so this uh, syntax is is. Uh, let me get out my screen brush so I can explain this. Okay. So this guy here, the double slash, is an escape character. Okay. Um, it's a literal escape character because the first slash escapes the second slash. So that is saying slash. So slash, if you want to escape the following thing, basically. So this is an escape sequence. This is a beginning of an escape sequence. What are you escaping? That's the next character that's coming into play. And that this is a character class that is saying it's either the double quote or a uh, literal slash which is to say that if you have a string literal that looks like you know there's some characters between two double quotes you can have an escape sequence which looks like it starts with a single slash the two slashes means one slash because this slash is an escape sequence within this string that uh, in this context, uh, a slash, what can follow a slash? Either another slash, like that, or a, or a double quote. So this guy means a double quote, and this guy means a slash. Um, and then here, this is an or. So, so th this is saying be in between the double quotes, you can either have this one of these escape sequences, or you can have this thing. And then what is this thing is that caret means not. So it's not any of these things. It's not a new line. It's not a um, double quote, and it's not a slash. But any other character is allowable. So essentially, anything is allowable except for these three very specific things. So that's what how the string works. Um, we're gonna do a very similar thing for regex. I'm gonna say, um, well, you can use an escape character to escape some things. What can you escape? Um, I guess I'll just list them out. You can certainly escape uh, escape. <laughs> a, 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 a forward slash, is that a forward slash? Um, you can escape double quotes. I'll, I'll put double quotes in there. I'm not sure what else you can escape. I, I actually think you can s escape a whole bunch of things in uh, regular expressions, but I'm actually not going to try to enumerate them all. I can look up a page and find all of them, but I don't want to do that for now because I want to get something going quickly and uh, we can always add them in later. Um, so. 
uh, what about the um, oh and this star by the way means zero or more repetitions of the preceding thing which is this whole whole big old expression here um, I'll say not again uh, if it's as as long as not a I want to say this character because yeah as long as it's not the ending slash character I guess it's allowable yeah I mean even double quote should be allowable but although you can certainly escape a double quote I'm just going with this and I think this will match regular expressions I'm hoping so with that I'm going to try this regular expression oh 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 uh, actually this one and see if that works out for us I'm gonna parse it first baby steps uh no it did get a regex token so that's actually good and uh, we just need to the lexer is working that's what that means so we just need to update the grammar to use this new type of token i'm gonna make the text a little smaller again uh, i'm gonna say an expression can actually be uh, a literal oh a, or i should say a literal can be a uh, regex as well in addition to the other types of literals so now i need to regenerate the parser and let's parse it again and we're able to uh, parse it um, and i'm gonna look at the ast file look for this regex token i only have this value which is the regex which i'm gonna just as is spit it back out in javascript um, and try generating it, the code. And oops, I didn't write generate. I guess. Okay, now it's saying an unknown type regex. So in the generator, so the generator doesn't know how to generate something of type regex well that's easily solved because uh, we can just return the value which looks like the original uh, I just want to show you we can just return whatever that is and that's a representation of the regex in javascript land so let's try that again and now it did it and it, it actually generated the javascript down here which i'm gonna want to fix but it did generate this regular expression and now if we run this it does work uh even with that it still works and that's beautiful okay so i think we solved the ch code challenge um maybe maybe we should write some more tests for it um but you know uh we, we solved the code challenge so let me do a couple of cleanup uh cleanup so first of all i'm gonna have the generator generate into the same directory using the same um, uh, dir base dir technique using path that dir name of the file name and then appending that to the uh the name of this file using path that join so that now I'm gonna delete this top level JavaScript file and hopefully when I run 
using run.js uh, it will run everything correctly but it didn't and I think that's because in my run.js I'm gonna need to use the same technique here mm, oh, JS file I see okay I'm gonna do this third name thing again Okay, that worked. Beautiful. Um, I was thinking of something else to do. Oh, I remember now. And that was, uh, I actually don't want if statements to be allowed to have, not to not have an alternate case, like the else statement. I don't even want this to be optional because I want because this language has the spirit of a functional programming language and I want it to stay that way. So yeah, the else block is not optional anymore. Uh, this means I'm gonna have to change these indexes here. The alternate is gonna be wrong. So the consequent code block is still correct, which is four and then this is this is five and this is six this is seven and this is eight. This should be data index eight. That also means my generator for the if statement uh, does not need to consider the two different cases anymore. Okay, I'm gonna regenerate the parser rerun my code challenge and it seems to work. Uh, I'm actually going to have the program spit out a couple of different cases. So I'll print um, the stealth warrior goes to that. Yep, and uh, I'll do the same with the other code examples here, which I think it, it had like, it had this. And then it had this empty string And it had the ABC. A dash B dash C and it wants ABC as the result in all caps. See if all of those work. And if they don't all work, then I will maybe fix them. They all seem to work, great. So I solved the code challenge and I did a couple of other cleanup things with this language along the way. Uh, I think that's a good place to um, end this session here. Uh, let me think about what else to do for this language. Uh, I already did this one. Um, and the index notation might be good. I I'm thinking about Unicode support, like so that you can um, use emojis for your variable names or, or, or like another language N name your variable names in another language like Chinese or something uh, classes I think would be fun to do actually um, because I actually haven't implemented object oriented or object oriented classes in a language before um, I don't think it would be hard in terms of in to do it in this language when you're just translating to JavaScript 
the 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 way to encode classes in JavaScript is very straightforward because JavaScript more or less already have classes. Um, if you even if you don't want to use the new class syntax in JavaScript, generating the prototype style way of writing classes is very simple in JavaScript as well. Um, oh, I said something about the word summary because uh, th which was a program that I uh, use as an example a lot. We could do that uh, example in the future. Um, and I think DOM support would be very cool. Th there are some basic uh, programming things such as operators, <laughs> which we don't have. And I, I actually think doing operators would be good as an example to show you how to do them because most programming languages do have operators, unlike this one. Okay, so anyway, with that, I'm gonna end this session here. Uh, thank you for watching and I hope to see you in the next episode. And as usual, I'm going to commit this code and uh, post it into the readme of this, of this project.